Detective Collins. I'll be right there. What's the situation? Trace on the place came back. Cyrus Maroney. The rich guy? Yeah. Is it safe? Yeah, no gas leak detected. Yeah, it's him, all right. Let's bag this for evidence. Also, we need to get a blood sample. I need to know if he was drinking. What do you think happened? Well, those are sleeping pills. It's a pretty full bottle, so I don't think it was a suicide. It could have just been an accident. Why wasn't he wearing his seatbelt? He could have survived this. We'll need to wear the seat belts. Evening, officer. Sorry for the inconvenience, sir, but you have to wait for us to clear the scene. Is there another way back into town? Yeah, but the detour takes you back 20 minutes. We have a lane clear up in 10. Okay, thanks. Excuse me, officer. I'm a reporter and I was wondering if there's any information that you can share with me about what happened here. Which paper you with? Whichever one that pays. I'm a freelancer. I don't have any information. They usually do this kind of thing down at the station. Okay, thanks anyway. Excuse me, officer. One more question. Who's that? Lead Detective Collins. May I have a word with him? I'm afraid not. Why don't you wait in your car? Miss Veroni, Miss Veroni, a question please. Miss Veroni. Miss Veroni. Was it an accident? What happened in there? Miss Veroni. Did they rule it an accident? Miss Veroni. Just, just one comment. One comment, please. Was your husband's death an accident? Miss Veroni. 
Just worry, the truth is out there. People want to know the truth. Just Roddy. Roddy! Commissioner, here. question, here. please. Moment, please, Commissioner. Please, sir. I will issue a statement. We have concluded the investigation and autopsy of Cyrus Moroni. We need to put to rest the ridiculous conjectures around the Moroni death. It was discovered that Mr. Moroni had consumed a small amount of alcohol prior to the crash, but contrary to rumors that have been circulating, there's been nothing to indicate foul play. It is concluded that this was an accident. The cause of death was brain trauma. Our sincere condolences go out to all of those affected by Mr. Moroni's passing. Yes. Commissioner, what's going to happen to Ortis? We do not have that information. Thanks. Final question. Commissioner, was Cyrus Moroni known to be taking medication at the time of his crash? Detective Collins concluded that he was taking medication, but nothing serious. So one more That's question. it. No more questions. Commissioner, one more question, please. One more question, please, sir. Detective Collins, this is Mrs. Maroney. Mrs. Maroney, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you for coming, Detective Collins. John, would you please bring us some drinks? Of course. I have to be honest with you. Not everything we said at the press conference was the entire truth. While outwardly it looks like a simple accident, we have reason to believe that your husband committed suicide. What? Why would you think that? We mentioned that he had alcohol in his system. What we didn't say is he'd also been taking sleeping pills. The autopsy revealed he was dead just before the impact. That's impossible. Cyrus wasn't taking any sleeping medication. Detective, thank you. Anything else? No, that's okay. Are you sure you don't want to be alone for this? It's all right, Detective. He's like a brother to me. Okay. The accident happened at around 11.30 last night out on the old country road, going down into the valley. Yes. That's where he would drive on the weekends. It was the only time he got to go out and think. And you're positive that he wasn't taking any sleeping medication? We've spoken to his doctor. He was on a couple other prescriptions. Not sleeping medication. He always slept very well. And you didn't have sleeping pills around the house? No, uh, not that I can recall. I just can't see him doing such a thing. He seems so happy. There, there must be something more. Isn't there anything else you can do? We'll do everything we can, Mrs. Moroni. And it is possible that there is something else going on here. We see this situation all the time. 
so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have for you right now. I'll be on my way. We'll walk you out. Been speaking? Hey, thanks for getting back to me on this. I know it's a little bit troublesome for you. Okay. Yeah, I'll be there soon. Thanks. He's been expecting you. Right this way. Shoes.
Audrey, this is Vince the reporter. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Maroney. Again, my sincere condolences for your loss. Thank you. Please have a seat. Would you like something to drink? A coffee would be nice. All right. Sean, would you bring some coffee? Yes, uh, anything for you? Bring two cups, I'll have some coffee as well. Of course. So, I've been thinking since our conversation on the phone. Why now? You could have written about this story at any time. With this passing, everyone's gonna be after the story of Cyrus Maroney. But I got approached by Entrepreneur Monthly to write a feature article on his behalf. I just want to include a piece of his personal life in the article so everyone can see the man behind the corporation in every aspect of life. I see. So far, all they want is the story of his death. I'm sick of it. Do you mind if I record this conversation for my reference? Will anyone else hear it? No, just me. But I might quote you though, if that's alright. Of course. So, can you start off by telling me how you guys met? Yes. Well, it goes back many years. I had just graduated at the time, and his company was already quite large. Ortis had acquired several smaller companies, and they were reaching for dominance in the IT market. I had applied to work at a smaller office. Cyrus was always very involved with his company. He insisted on meeting every new hire in person, no matter how busy he was. <laughs> I remember I was very nervous when he came in. He said it was a normal response to when people first meet him. We chatted for a while. And then before he left, he looked back and he said, I'll be back with a big smile on his face. Coffee? Would be anything else? No, thank you. Not at this time. All right. How do you take your coffee? Two sugars, please. So he had an eye on you, right from the start. What would you say his work ethic was like as you got to know him? Well, we didn't see much of each other during the week because he worked such long hours. I'd say 16 to 18 a day. He was always going to different departments and having meetings with clients and going over reports. However, if he didn't have to travel, he kept his weekends free for us. So he kept his personal life separate from his work life? Yes, until we got married. And then we moved here and he created the office so he could spend more time at home. Shortly after that is when he decided he'd take drives on the weekends to relax himself. Why did you stop? I'm sorry, Miss Maroney. I know this is not really easy for you to talk about, least of all with a journalist. But I just can't help my curiosity. I like to play detective sometime and something just doesn't add up. What do you mean? I was watching the press release and just before coming here, I visited the scene of the accident if it truly was an accident. It seems like he just... drove straight into the wall. There were no skid marks. There were no signs to show him avoiding hitting the wall. The 
Doesn't that seem a bit strange for you? What are you getting at? I just don't think the police are giving us all the information. I think there is more to the story. So do I. Detective Collins said that they suspect suicide. I'm sorry, I just cannot see my husband wanting to take his own life. But well, why would the police hide something like that? Did Detective Collins ever give you any other information that wasn't in the press release? How do I know you're not going to publish these details? Miss Maroney, you have my word. This is strictly confidential. I'm not interested in putting the details of his death in this article. All the same, I, I'm not comfortable talking about this anymore. Fair enough. I'm sorry I brought it up. May I use your bathroom? Of course. Down the hall to the right, second door on the left. What are you doing in here? Jesus. You scared the shit out of me. I got a little lost and I saw the door open so I thought I'd come check out some of the pictures. Well, I'll take it back to Miss Maroney. Detective Collins, do you have a minute? I'm in a hurry, kid. Weren't you the detective on the scene of the Maroney accident? I'm writing a report on Cyrus Maroney and I just had a few questions. I can't comment on that case. But doesn't the accident seem a bit strange? There were no skid marks? You can't comment on that case. But detective, if it was an accident, wouldn't there be some signs to show that he was trying to avoid hitting the wall?
Hey, what's this? My number's on the back. Hi, it's Detective Sam Collins. I need access to the Wachowski files. Thanks, I'll be right over.
It's Vince, right? Detective Collins. He gave me that photo yesterday at the police station. Wasn't sure you were going to follow up. Now I am. We need to go for a ride. Yeah, sure. So where'd you get this photo? You know, I like to play detective sometime and uh, I'm always reading the paper and searching the web for some news. A man like Cyrus Moroni, he's everywhere. Do you know where this photo was taken? At a charity banquet six months ago, hosted by Moroni. So you know who this is with him, right? So here's the million dollar question. Why'd you give it to me? I had a friend. I'm not a big city boy. When I came here, I wanted to start building my career, so I met someone who helped me out big time. Before long, he started coming to me with some troubling stories about a crime syndicate he was involved with. He wanted out, he wanted to get clean. I tried to dig up some info, but I couldn't find any proof. It didn't matter much anyway. Why is that? A few weeks later, he ended up dead. I didn't hear from him for a while, so I thought he had left town. Paper said it was an accident. A lot of accidents happen around these guys. I suppose you could call it unfinished business. Where I come from, there's only some petty theft, small crime. I suppose I owe it to him, you know, after all he did for me. Where are you from? A small city down in Iowa, mostly farms out there. It's one of those places where everybody kind of knows each other. Nothing much happening out there. Careful you don't bite off more than you can chew here, kid. But that's why I think you're the man for this, detective. You also have unfinished business. If I could be of any help, just let me know. You have my number. I'll keep that in mind. If you come across anything else interesting, let me know. Miss Moroni, what a surprise. Vince, I wasn't expecting to bump into you. Yeah, me neither. It's funny, actually. I was just with Detective Collins earlier, and we were having a little bit of a chat. Oh, that's quite a coincidence. Yeah, we were discussing the case a bit. If you have some time, I can fill you in. Okay. But let's go somewhere a little more quiet. Please, get in the car. This. It's part of my research. I tend to spend a lot of time in the library researching for my articles. Oh, so you like to be thorough? Yes. Even as a child, when I got obsessed with something, I would consume everything I could about that subject. I guess I became a journalist because I like digging into the facts, researching, getting to the dirt that lies underneath the surface, you know? So, what did you want to tell me? It's about Cyrus's death. Some information has come to light, suggesting that he may have been involved in some legal activity. There may be more to his death than we initially thought, just as you suspected. In what way? 
can't say for sure until I connect more dots, but you should be careful. If you feel like you're being followed or in danger, call the police. Thanks for your concern. Does Detective Collins know all about this? Yeah, he knows. And is there any new developments? No, nothing concrete yet. But I was wondering where you're from. That's not a local accent. No, I'm from a small town outside Seattle. Really? Me too. Well, the small town part, that is. I'm from Idaho. If you don't mind my asking, what brought you to the city? Well, my father had a job. Um, and then the company was sold. And he lost his job. But by that time, I already had my career and I was madly in love. How about yourself? I wanted to come to a place with lots of action, lots of stories and truths to uncover. But one day, I hope to open up a dive shop. A dive shop? <laughs> That's original. Yeah, the ocean fascinates me. The life underneath the surface is just incredible. I can't believe he really did it. He ran stark naked during the graduation ceremony right across the stage. For the life of me, I still can't remember why he did it. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey? I'm sorry, I didn't realize how late it was. I've got to get going. It was nice talking to you. It was really nice talking to you too. Bye. I'm sorry I'm late. I got caught up in something. Shouldn't keep a girl waiting. Especially when she's doing you a favor. Thanks. I owe you one. I don't know about you, but I'm starving. By the way, you look really beautiful tonight.
you messaged me. What have you got? I was doing some digging on the companies owned by Maroney and Armstrong. At first, it didn't make sense. One's in logistics and information systems, and the other is a major importer. Yeah, I get that, but I've never really seen a connection there. Yeah, until I dug a bit deeper and found a subsidiary company under Ortiz. How did you find that? I was going through some local newspapers and came across an interesting article. Didn't see much until I saw Cyrus Moroni in the photo. The name of the company is Transatlantic, which made me think this might be the connection that we were looking for. Yeah, that rings a bell. So I went to check it out last night to see what I can find. Are you stupid? Why didn't you call me? Yeah, I know. But I honestly didn't think there was much to worry about since it was supposed to be a legit business. So anyways, after checking out the dockyard, I came across the office of Transatlantic overhearing some people talking about something going on tonight. Didn't get much more though. We raided a warehouse owned by Transatlantic. What if... Moroni was using that as a front to move shipments for Armstrong, making sure all those shipments got through. Which raises two questions. One, was their relationship more than just business? And if it was, is that ultimately what got Moroni killed? What if they were doing dirty business? Moroni wanted out and Armstrong didn't like it and couldn't convince him to stay in the game. So she took him out of the picture. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna go back to that warehouse tonight. See what I can find. All right. Where's your boss? So, are we going to do this here? My guy's gotta pat you down first. Go ahead, boys. She's good, Frankie. All right, gentlemen, follow me.
Hey, Chief, what's up? Have a seat. I saw that you dug up the old case again. What's going on, Sam? I don't know who was in charge here before me, but you gotta let it go. Yeah, but I have new information. We may finally be able to close that case. Okay, so what do you got for me? It starts with Maroney's death. Something is not right. He was not on any kind of sleep medication. I've confirmed this with his wife. Something doesn't add up there. That's it, Sam? I need a little more than that. Acting on a tip last night, I was down at the docks at the transatlantic warehouse where we came up empty 10 years ago. There was activity there. Some of the same guys who we thought were part of the syndicate back then, I saw them there last night. Also, I've seen a photograph of Maroney and Armstrong together. I believe that they were in some kind of business shipping deal. I think they were trying to import drugs into the country. It may be what got Maroney killed. I'm running the plates from last night. We may finally have a connection here. This all seems pretty thin, Sam. You see this file right here? I don't want to add to it, so stay out of trouble. Thanks, Chief. Thanks. That's two I owe you. I can't have you showing up dead. I have no intention of doing that. I aim to keep my promise, you know. Anyway, how'd you know I'd be there? Luck, I guess. I was coming to say hi and saw those guys chasing you. Vince, what's going on? I was following a lead and must have poked my head in the wrong door. You know, for such a smart guy, you can be pretty stupid sometimes. <laughs> you know, whatever gets the job done. <laughs> so, you hungry? What are you having to drink? I have an espresso. Two espressos, please. So what's the news? Well, it's not good. I didn't ask for good news, I asked for the news. Out with it. The kid got away from the two guys we had on him. A girl with black hair driving out. You are sure, Mr. Are you sure? Keep a close eye on her. We broke into his apartment. And found all kinds of evidence against you and Mom. He can't trust anyone. I'll give him another day to deliver and then he's finished. Give her some more time. And then bring her to me. Yes, boss.
Hey, it's Vince. My apartment got broken into. No, you were the first one I called. Can you come by? Thanks. See you soon. Wow. Someone did a number on this place. Yeah. Don't really know what they were after. Nothing seems to be missing. Any idea who would do something like this? Maybe somebody was following me earlier. Because there was two guys waiting outside my building this morning. Maybe it was the guys at the docks. Did you see their faces? Could you ID them? No. The moment they yelled out to me, I ran. You know, I saw Armstrong earlier today. She was meeting with one of her top lieutenants. What were they talking about? I only got bits and pieces of the conversation. But they're talking about a kid. Based on this, thinking the kid was you. Me? What the hell do they want with me? Well, they saw you down at the docks. Better question though would be, how did they find you? The other thing they were talking about, it was kind of hard to get. They were talking about a woman, I think her name was Kelly. Fuck. She's probably in danger. Who is Kelly? I gotta go. Who is Kelly to you? Look, I'll tell you, but we gotta go get her now. Wait a second. If she's in trouble, she's been taken. That's what they want you to do. You're playing their game. You're not safe. Let's get you out of here. We'll contact her on the way. Nice place you got. Thanks. Make yourself at home. You know the reporter I told you about? Mm-hmm. The guy who helped me out? It wasn't a guy. It was Kelly. So you lied to me? I didn't know if you were gonna help if you knew the truth. Me and her, we go way back. She came into the city to make it big. And then I got some weird messages from her and I got worried, so I came into the city to find her and when I did, 
she was in way too deep. I tried to help her get out, but I can only do so much as a journalist, you know? I saw you at the scene, the Moroni accident, and hoped that you could help. So now you're saying you used me? You know I'm a cop, right? Look, I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. I'm sorry I didn't clear this up right away. I knew Armstrong and Moroni were connected. And you're a smart guy. I know you would see the past that accident. So she's your source of your information? Yeah. We've been trying to gather enough evidence to bring them down. When Kelly first came into the city, it wasn't as easy as she dreamed. And the job wasn't going so well, so to keep busy, she volunteered at the Good Night's Shelter across town. Yeah, I heard of them. Turns out the shelter was just a front for pushing drugs. That's how Kelly got involved with Armstrong. They came to her with the job and she was desperate. You're saying that Armstrong is involved with the Good Night Shelters? Yeah. Armstrong is a big supporter of the shelters. Donates to them every year. These shelters are putting drugs in the streets. Okay, that kind of makes sense. There's no government money there. It's all private. <clears throat> Weren't those originally founded by Moroni's foundation? You're a sharp guy. These guys are somehow deeply connected. Is that her? No, but I should message her again to see if she's all right. When you do, give her my number. Tell her I'd like to set up a meet. Also, she is 100% being watched. Stay away from her. Okay. I'm gonna head to bed. Feel free to crash here tonight. How are you holding up? I'm doing all right, thanks. How are you doing? I've seen better days, but I'm okay. I've been thinking a lot about reading my diaries in Cyrus. It's occurred to me that he was acting rather unusual. I just didn't think anything of it at the time. When did you first notice he was acting differently? A couple weeks before the accident or so. Did he mention anything that led you to believe that something was up? He did mention a dream of his an awful lot, actually. It's something that he talked about before our marriage, and he just hadn't brought it up in a really long time. Hmm. Maybe he knew something was up. So what was his dream about? It's not so different from yours, really. He wanted to buy some land on a small island in the South Pacific. A place where we could just go and get away from everything. I hadn't heard of it before. Rotatunga? Interesting. That's a pretty isolated island. I wonder why there. Well, he was really fascinated with the whole archipelago. It was rumored that that island was a safe haven for pirates for many years. And he loved pirate lore. Buried treasure, the swashbuckling, all that stuff. How much did you know about his business? Not that much, really. I left the company shortly before we were married, and he didn't talk about it, and I didn't ask. Do you know about the Good Nights homeless shelters around the city? Of course, yes. It's set up by the Ortis Foundation. Cyrus was very involved in the community. Well, I found some evidence that suggests they were a front for distributing drugs throughout the city. What are you saying? That Cyrus was a drug dealer? Not personally, but 
He may have been helping out a friend to put the drugs in the city, offering the homeless shelters as a distribution point. That just does not sound like him at all. Cyrus was involved in the community to do good. Sometimes people are not what they seem. But he may have also been persuaded. I'll try to find some more information. Thank you. So how are things here? Sean has been acting rather strange these days. How so? He's just been spending a lot of time in Cyrus's office. Any reason you figure? He says that it's because he wants to make sure his things are in order. Well, the estate is yours now. Maybe you should go through his belongings. It might give us a clue as to what's going on. Would you help me? I'm sorry? Well, I'm sure you'd recognize something of importance before I could, and... To be honest, I don't even know where to begin. Of course. I'd be happy to help. Vince has told me a lot about you. <laughs> Should I be flattered? He obviously cares for you a lot. To go to all this trouble for you? <laughs> yeah, he's pretty amazing. So we don't have a lot of time. Tell me what you know about the shelters. I mean, I can't say much more than I'm sure Vince has already told you. Do you have any hard evidence? Well... You can check them out for yourself. Basically, they have a daily menu. Simple soups, rolls, you know. <laughs> it's not gourmet. You go up to the front counter and get a ticket. And then you ask for the gazpacho soup from yesterday. They never serve gazpacho. You hand them the ticket and the $20 and they put something extra on your plate. Okay, so they're acting as a point-of-sale system. Exactly. Mostly for the users. They have something different for the dealers. Okay. I saw you down at the warehouse a couple of nights ago. You were carrying a briefcase. Tell me about that. That was a new customer. Kind of a show of faith. Basically, the distributors, they pay up front. And then the supply location, that's sent later. And how do they get the product in? It's shipped. How it gets to the docks, I have no idea. How did you get involved in this? The big guy. Did you see him? Yeah, I saw him. Yeah, he's pretty much in charge of the whole thing. I mean, Armstrong still pulls the strings and makes all the big decisions, but everything goes through him. So he's Armstrong's right hand. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, he volunteers down at the shelter sometimes. That's where he met me. He must have taken a liking or something. Because he offered to get me off the streets. So I said yes. And once I was in, I just couldn't get out. How come you've never come forward with this information before? <laughs> and expose the shelters, it wouldn't do much. Anyway, all you need to remember is the gazpacho soup. You'll get what you need. 
I'll see what I can do. I'm gonna drop you off just up ahead. Can you walk back to the car from here? Yeah, that's fine. What's up, Vince? They must have taken her. But why now? Did they see you? Or were you followed? Not likely. I was checking for a tail the whole time. Have you checked the car out? Yeah, I have. Vince, I need you to do something for me. I need you to lay low for a few hours. Let me take care of this. I'll be in touch tomorrow. Hey Chief, we got a situation. My informant's been compromised. I need a unit. I need an undercover officer. The Goodnight Shelters, they're being used as a front to distribute drugs. I know how to prove it. Yeah, yeah, I know. But this is our chance. We've got to get narcotics involved. We can really put a dent in these guys' operations. I'm coming in. I, I got to file a missing persons report. I'm about half an hour away from the station. I'll rendezvous with the team there. Okay. When you get into the shelter, they're going to hand you a ticket. Take the ticket up to the counter, hand it over with a 20, ask them if they have any gazpacho soup. They won't have it. But when they bring you your meal, it should come with the drugs. Copy that. What the hell is taking him so long? He's right. It's taken way too long. Don't worry guys, he'll be okay. He's a professional. These things take time. There you go. Just as you said. Hey, soup was not bad either. 
Let's get that back to the lab, get it analyzed. Hi, Kelly. Good to see you. I trust everything is going according to the plan. It's under control. By now, they probably think that I'm kidnapped. And they're in a panic. Excellent. It's your turn. Hello, Kelly. Where are you? Vince, so good to talk to you. We have Kelly. If you want to see her again, you'll need to locate the evidence that connects us with Moroni. And fast. We have until tomorrow evening. We know you can. Call us on this phone by tomorrow evening, or you can say goodbye to Kelly. That's all, Vince. Good day. Did he say anything? He doesn't have to. I could hear him his breathing. He should have all the motivation he needs. Let's hope so. Hey, it's Vince. Do you have it? I don't have it on me, but I know where it is. It's at the Maroni's. Where? Look, here's how it's gonna go down. Once you get me Kelly, I'll give you your evidence. Audrey's out all evening. You meet me at the Maroni's at nine o'clock tonight. Don't forget to bring Kelly. Who made you the boss? Remember we have your girl? And I have your evidence. It looks like we are going to Moroni's mansion tonight. Where's Kelly? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen her since this morning. Since this morning? Does anybody know what the fuck is going on here tonight?
Are you sure you weren't followed? Yes, I am. Good. We're too close now. The last thing we need is heat. So. Did you get it? Vin said he can get everything for us tonight. At night. At Ernie's place. We should meet there. Kelly's gone. Sean? Sean, are you okay? Liz? Oh my god! Sean! What are you doing? Why don't we go sit down and have a chat? It all started a few weeks ago, before your husband died. We were meeting at our usual spot on a Saturday afternoon. I was giving Cyrus the manifest and the cash for the European shipment of the drugs to clear the docks. That's when he asked me to send Armstrong a message that he wanted out. He wanted nothing more to do with the dirty business. You see, Armstrong knew that Cyrus had evidence that directly linked her to the drug circulation in the city. And that was my job, to find that evidence. So I followed Cyrus to the estate and waited. If 
Finally, Sean came out to leave for the night. I followed him to a bar downtown. I waited until he had a few drinks before I joined him at the bar. Then I went up to him and sparked a conversation and bought a few more rounds. That's when he started giving me information and talking nonsense about you and Cyrus. At that moment, I figured out that he had a thing for you. And that's when my work started. Surprisingly, he was willing to help me to take Cyrus out of the picture. So I told him how and when to do it to make it look like an accident. It's a funny thing, you know. Mixing alcohol with a certain type of sleeping pills. It makes people pass out. All you have to do is stash the pills and make it look believable. After that, I made my move to get to know you. While Sean was looking for the evidence and looking to see where the money was at. It was when you told me about Cyrus's dream about the Cook Islands and seeing the globe in the library that sparked my curiosity. That gave me every information that I needed. And the rest was putting all the pieces together for this night. So what about me? Look, that money is dirty money. You were never supposed to know about it. You have your inheritance in the estate. If I were you, I'd get out of here. Go on a long trip. It's time for me to go. Armstrong's men and the cops are gonna show up any minute. I'm sorry, Audrey. A week has passed since the events that took place at the Moroni estate. Vince Madani, the mastermind who was responsible for bringing down the crime syndicate connected to the Goodnight Shelter and the murder of Orta CEO Cyrus Moroni, still remains at large. Many questions still remain unclear, 
but a source close to the investigation revealed the motive for the crimes to be a heist worth $4.2 million.